Hello students, welcome to the next video. In the previous classes, we learnt about the embedded system, its core and also the memory element. In this video, we will be learning about the sensors and actuators. Sensing technology plays an important role in many embedded systems. Sensors and actuators are critical components of several embedded systems. A sensor is a transducer device that converts energy from one form to another for the measurement or control purpose in which these sensors are connected to input port of embedded system. Actuator is a form of transducer which converts signal to the corresponding physical action. It acts as an output device. The I.O. subsystem of the embedded system facilitates the interaction of the embedded system with the external world. Interaction happens through the sensors and actuators connected to the input and output port respectively of the embedded systems. So some, we'll discuss some of the uh, sensors and actuators. The first one is the LED, light emitting diode. LED is an important output device for, for visual indication in any embedded systems. LED can be used as an indicator for the status of various signals or situations. For example, if the device is turned on, if the device is having a low battery, or if it needs to a charging the battery, etc. The ideal LED interfacing circuit is shown in the diagram. For proper functioning of the LED, the anode is connected to the positive terminal of the supply voltage and the cathode to the negative terminal of the supply voltage. The current flowing through the LED must be limited to a value below the maximum current that it can conduct. A resistor R is used in series to limit the current through the LED. LEDs can be interfaced to the port pin of processor or the controller in two ways. The first method is that the anode is directly connected to the port pin and the port pin drives the LED. The port pin sources current to the LED when the port pin is at logic high. The second method, the cathode of the LED is connected to the port pin of the processor or controller and the anode of the supply through a current limiting resistor. The LED is turned on when the port pin is at logic low. Here port pin sinks current. So this is about the light emitting diode. So if you want more information you can go through the link which I have been provided in the bottom of the slide. The next one is the 7 segment LED display. The 7 segment LED display is an output device for displaying alphanumeric characters. It contains seven LED segments, that is A to G, arranged in a special form used for displaying alphanumeric characters and one LED used for representing the decimal point in the decimal number display, which is named as DP. The LED segments A to G and DP should be lit according to display numbers and characters. The seven segment LED displays are available in two different configurations. They are common anode and common cathode. So these two co configurations are shown in the diagram. In the first diagram, the common anode display, all the anode connections of the LED segments are joined together to the logic one. The individual segments are eliminated by applying a ground that is logic zero via a suitable current limiting resistor to the cathode. In the second diagram, the common cathode display, all the cathode connections of the LED segments are joined together to the logic zero or ground. The individual segments are eliminated by the application of high or logic one signal via the current limiting resistor to the forward bias, the individual anode terminal. So this is about the seven segment LED display configuration. Next, moving on to the optocoupler. An optocoupler is an electronic component that interconnects two separate electrical circuits by the means of light sensitive optical interface. Optocoupler combines an LED and a phototransistor in a single housing. The diagram illustrates the functioning of an optocoupler device. In electronic circuits, an optocoupler is used for suppressing interference in data communication, circuit isolation, high voltage separation, etc. Optocouplers can be used in either input circuits or in output circuits. The diagram shows the usage of optocoupler in the input circuit and the output circuit of an embedded system with microcontroller as an system core. Optocoupler is available as IC 
from different semiconductor manufacturers. MCT 2M IC from the Fairchild Semiconductor is an example for optocoupler IC. Next, moving on to the next component that is relay. A relay is an electromagnetic switch operated by a relatively small electric current that can turn on or off a much larger electric current. Relay works on the principle of electromagnetic principle. So if the working of the relay is shown in the diagram. The input circuit is switched off and no current flows through it until something turns it on. The output circuit is also switched off. When a small current flows in the input circuit, it activates the electromagnet which produces a magnetic field all around it. The energized electromagnet pulls the metal bar in the output circuit toward, towards it. Closing the switch and allowing a much bigger current to flow through the output circuit, the output circuit operates a high current appliance such as lamp or electric motor. Relays are available in different configurations. So the different configurations which are used widely, they are shown in the diagram. So the single pole single throw configuration has only one path for information flow. The path is either open or closed in normal condition. For normally open single pole single throw relay, the circuit is normally open and it becomes closed when the relay is energized. For normally closed single pole single throw relay, the circuit is normally closed and it becomes open when the relay is energized. Next, for the single pole double throw configuration, there are two paths for information flow and they are selected by energizing or de-energizing the relay. The transistor based relay driving circuit can be explained as follows. A transistor is used for building the relay driver circuit as shown in the diagram. The relay is normally controlled using a relay driver circuit connected to the port pin of a processor or a controller. A freewheeling diode is used for freewheeling the voltage produced in the opposite direction when the relay coil is de-energized. Most of the industrial relays are bulky and require high voltage to operate. Special relays called Read delays are available for embedded applications requiring switching of low voltage DC signals. So this is about the component relay. Next moving on to the FISO buzzer. FISO buzzer is a type of electronic device that's used to produce tone alarm or sound. A FISOelectric buzzer contains a FISOelectric diaphragm which produces audible sound in response to the voltage applied to it. The piezoelectric buzzers are available in two types, self-driving and external driving. The self-driving circuit contains all the necessary components to generate sound at a predefined tone. It will generate a tone on applying the voltage. The external driving piezo buzzers support the generation of different tones. The tone can be varied by applying a variable pulse strain to the piezoelectric buzzer. A FISO buzzer can be directly interfaced to the port pin of the processor or the controller. Depending on the driving current requirements, a FISO buzzer can also be interfaced using a transistor-based driver circuit in the case of a relay. Next component is a push-button switch. It's an input device. That is, a push-button is a simple type of switch that controls an action in a machine. The push-button switch comes in two configurations, namely push-to-make, push-to-break. Push to make configuration, the switch is normally in open state and it makes, makes a circuit contact with it is pushed or pressed. Push to break configuration, the switch is normally in the closed state and it breaks the circuit contact when it is pushed or pressed. The push button stays in closed or open state as long as it is kept in the pushed state and it breaks or makes a circuit connection when it is released. Push button is used for generating a momentary pulse. In embedded applications, Push button is generally used as reset and start switch and push pulse generator. Push button is normally connected to the port pin of the host processor or a controller. So depending upon the way in which the push, push, uh, push button interface to the controller, it can generate either a high pulse or a low pulse. The diagram illustrates how the push button can be used for generating low and high pulses. So these are the components.